Welcome, survivor. Enjoy the view. You see before you the pinnacle of mankind's ingenuity. And now all of it is mine. I control this vessel now. I command its evolution. And very soon, its destination. From there, my will shall spread across the cosmos forever. Infinite and undying. And there's nothing you or that witless puppet, that shadow of her, can do to stop me. I have already set my designs in motion. Our future awaits. Survivor. Edmund Rockwell is not dead. That's right, he's back. He somehow managed to survive the crash landing of Aberration on Earth and beamed himself to the Genesis colony ship. From here, he has a terrifying plan of cosmic domination, and I am the only thing that stands between him and his goal. The time for fun and games has ended, and it's time to get real, because I have 100 days or less to kill Rockwell. in one piece. So, quick update. This isn't a simulation. We're really on a ginormous spaceship. And the ship's being taken over by... <laughs> now what are you two little gnats up to? This is to be mine. Okay, time to get away from all these tentacles and prying eyes. This might feel a bit weird. On the first day, I instantly realized that this was going to be a very different experience than any other map I had completed up until this point. Genesis 2 also had missions which could be accessed through these weird little consoles, but when I went to look at it, I noticed that all the hunting missions said that they were already completed. This was just the first of many missions related bugs that I would come across, and uh... You'll see what I'm talking about later. I also quickly realized that the exosuit that I had spawned in with didn't need any element to function, so I could just infinitely use all the special abilities. I ended up spending most of the day just zooming around the map, just drinking it all in, and realizing that all of this was just about one half of a map I was really kind of put off. Finding a base location was harder than I expected. I found this weird little raised platform area that looked kind of cool, but figured it would be kind of hard to get resources up there, so I left. I did need some meat, so I attempted to kill these turtles using my exosuit, and I almost died. I almost died to turtles. I would never live that down. I did manage to escape, fortunately, and return to that area I mentioned previously and decided to settle there. I really needed a source of water, so on the morning of day two, I built a very long irrigation pipe from the nearby river all the way up to my base. I put down some basic structures to help me get started before heading out to find some crystals so I could make a spyglass. While I was out, I had another near-death experience to this snowy owl. Again, way too close. I did finally find some crystal and went out looking for a nice berry farmer. As evening fell, I found this decent leveled parasaur and knocked it out. 
It finished taming on day three, and I immediately got to work harvesting a bunch of narco berries. And not even kidding, I didn't even have this dude for five minutes before this pack of commie raptors took notice of my capitalistic tendencies and put a quick end to it. Joke's on them, though, I got away with the narco berries, so ha! Yeah. While I was out and about doing my usual shenanigans, I noticed this level 112 Maywing, and I decided to try and tame it, but good grief those things are fast. No way I'm catching that. I began doing a bit of research so I could build a trap and learned that all I needed was a net gun, so I could just pin it down and shoot it in the butt unopposed. I needed a lot of stuff that I didn't currently have for it though, so it would take some grinding. The rest of the evening, I worked on my base. I spent a lot of time on day four just drop hunting, because the drops on Genesis 2 give you a lot of resources and sometimes it gives you exactly what you need to make a harpoon launcher which means you can shoot net projectiles which means you can tame a maywing and that's exactly what i did i tamed two high levels so now i was able to breed in the river nearby to my base there were a lot of beaver dams and before the end of the day i managed to knock out a high level beaver now i could harvest as much wood as my heart desired day five i bred my maywings and the beaver finished taming while i was out zooming around doing devious acts of mischief i found this high level kitty but Choofy, it's not a kitty, it's actually called a Thyla- Shut up, it's a cat. It's a kitty. Knocking it out was a piece of cake, but then I accidentally shot it an extra time after it already passed out, and the taming effectiveness went down. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. So I built a small makeshift stone trap around it and decided I would let it wake up again. I went back home to set up a bunch of forges before heading back out to collect a bunch of metal and wood. I would need more metal so I could industrialize my base a lot more. I had never really explored it too much, but it would make me feel amazing. While I waited for the kitty to wake up again on day six, I began to upgrade my floors. I decided that I would cover the entire top of the whatever this is with foundations and just make the whole thing my base. And finally, the kitty woke up, so it was time to go knock him out again. But when I went to go do so, I accidentally hit him an extra time again. I literally did it again. So I had to wait for it to wake up. Again. So I went around looking for something else to tame and found this Dodicarus. I would definitely need it later for the foundation building stuff, so I tamed it. Then the cat woke up again, and third time's the charm, right? Yes. Third time is indeed the charm. Although it shouldn't have taken me that many attempts, a win is a win. After that, my Dodic tamed up, no problem, so things were looking good so far. The cat finished taming up the next day and I named him Meow Mix. After that, I went on a small taming spree of sorts. I tamed this Triceratops and I also tamed a Megaloceros, cause both could harvest thatch. Why I tamed both? I don't know. For the rest of the day, I gathered a metric butt ton of both wood and thatch and began upgrading my base even further. Days 8, 9, and 10, I did nothing but work on my base. Day 11 was the day I finally got bored, but still, the first chunk of it was spent working on my base. When I did finally get bored, I did go around and hunt for drops. They had good loot, what can I say? Day 12 was more interesting though, I crafted my first fabricator. I didn't place it though because I had bigger plans and would save it for when I had actual structures, like a crafting hub. I also worked on my base a little bit more before heading back out to grab more drops. I ended up finding this Ascendant Longneck Rifle, so that was pretty cool. After that, I completed my first set of missions which was the weird race thing with the enforcers, I forgot what it was called. I ran it on all three, Gamma, Beta, and Alpha, and then when I left, uh, my Maywing was gone. Yeah, just poof. The entire rest of the day, I just kept looking for him to see if I could find him, but no, it's like he just vaporized into thin air. And not only that, I had all my loot from the drops, including that rifle. What? No, dude! Now if you'll excuse me, I'm just gonna go commit seppuku real quick. Day 13, I took Meow Mix out and started fighting some Alpha Raptors, but then I got double teamed and nearly died. <laughs> I managed to escape so I could heal all the way up before heading back into the thick of battle, where I nearly died again. 
Finally, I managed to find a way to cheese the fight, and I got all of their sweet, juicy experience. Later on, I found an Allosaurus with a good level that I decided to tame, and shortly after, an Ankylosaurus as well. While I waited for the two of them to tame, I went on a giant murdering spree to get a whole bunch of meat. I crafted another Maywing saddle later because the only one I had up until that point was on the one I had lost the day before. I finished the day by going on a large stone run. Day 14, I finally completed covering the entire top of my little platform in foundations. This definitely was the most ambitious building thing I had ever taken on. After that, I constructed a wall going all the way down to the forest floor below so I could run up it with my Thyla. It just was so much easier than the methods I had been using before. After that, I went back out to look for more drops, but this time these things were just about as useful as setting up a garden shop in the middle of the Sahara Desert. I found nothing good. I spent a good chunk of time on day 15 upgrading my base some more, adding some stairs and railing before heading back out to hunt more drops. The remainder of that day was spent looking for another high level Maywing. I just needed a breeding pair again. On day 16 the most infuriating thing happened, and I'm not even going to say it, I'm just gonna show you. Yeah. That Pegastomax literally stole my Ankylosaurus while it was in a cryopod. For real, whose idea was this? It's almost enough to get me to start drinking lean. I was momentarily distracted from the pain later when I found this level 108 Maywing and tamed it. Then I decided to get all my crap together and finally explore Rockwell's gardens for the first time. I left my Maywing on this little stone pillar so that it would stay safe, but I didn't realize that it was still whistled to follow me, and so when I went around just kind of observing the wildlife and returned to the pillar, it wasn't there. I lost another Maywing. I've lost two Maywings, and neither of them have died, to my knowledge. I hope they haven't died, that would be really sad. I returned to the Eden Ring and then decided to just run another mission, and this time I was doing another race. A canoe race. And it wasn't too bad. It was fun? It was, you know, just gamma, so maybe it would get harder. And guys, 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 it got harder. Way harder. Beta wasn't too bad, actually. I managed to beat it on the first try with a little bit of health left, but Alpha. Oh, Alpha. Most of this entire day was literally spent just rerunning Alpha over and over, failure after failure. I just could not, for whatever reason, beat it. Not until later that day, anyways, and I had spent so much time just trying to run this one mission that I literally had to walk away after I beat it. To blow off some more steam for the rest of the day, I just hunted drops and I actually found this industrial grinder. Guys, I think Ark is bipolar and this just supports my theory. And of course, before the stroke of midnight, I hatched my first baby Maywing. Day 18, I had to go looking for another Ankylosaurus, and I ended up taming this direwolf, but it didn't even last me five minutes, so it's hardly worth mentioning. It took me a little bit, but I finally did find a good Ankylosaurus, and then went back home to take care of my Maywing. The only other thing I did that day that was really notable was set up some crop plots. It would help me make kibble later, so yeah. Day 19 wasn't all too special. All I really did was work on my base a whole bunch, get a bunch of my crops going using fertilizer I had found in drops, and then go looking for more said drops. Day 20, I put more focus into getting the layout of my crafting hub finished. That way I was able to finally put down the industrial grinder I found and my fabricator. Electricity, storage, and some of the other stuff would soon come, but for now it was a start. And of course, I had to go with glass walls. I always go with glass walls. Now that I had the capability to organize my stuff on day 21, I finally began moving stuff out of my smithy, which up until that point had been my only means of storage. I then constructed some walls and began designing a little kitchen area, which would be exclusive for all my food-related crafting purposes. I also forgot to craft an S plus fabricator as opposed to the vanilla fabricator so I made sure to upgrade to that so I had more storage within the fabricator. Man, I, I wish I could stop saying fabricator. Uh, shoot dart. 
I said it again. Also, for the first ever time in this game, I used the grinder, and why have I never used this before? It was amazing. Day 22, I went out into the space void to farm some mutagel since it was on that cycle. For those of you who don't know, the space void in Genesis 2 has special resources that can only be harvested when they are present in their cycle. You can tell which kind of resource asteroids there are by looking at the color of the drops. Now, at the time, I wasn't really familiar with the whole mutagel thing, so I only harvested a couple hundred, and I would find out later that that would be a mistake. I went drop hunting again for the remainder of the day, but this time I struck gold. I found an Ascendant Pike and an Astrodelphus saddle. And for any viewers who don't know what an Astrodelphus is, I feel very sorry for you. Day 23, I was in dire need of gasoline, and for gasoline I needed oil, so I dove into the deep depths of the ocean so I could harvest some of the oil rocks down there. After that, with my newly acquired mutagel, I tamed a tech strider. It was kind of fun and involved this little hacking mini game. it wasn't too hard, and then I realized I couldn't cry about it. Huh? So I had to walk it all the way back to my base, which took most of the rest of the day. Also, remember the thylacolio wall? I wasn't satisfied with it, so I started building elevator tracks on it. I had big plans. Day 24, I crafted a refrigerator for my crafting hub so I could hold the organic polymer for long amounts of time. I ran out of electronics though, so a lot of the day was spent harvesting silica pearls from the riverbeds. When I returned home, I made a new smithy for the crafting hub and then placed some more elevator tracks. Day 25, I continued working on my crafting hub before going out to the space void which was currently on an oil rotation, and boy was that way more effective than going underwater. After I felt that I had enough, I went out looking for a high level allosaur and found this level 116. The beginning of day 26 was spent crafting element from element shards that I had got from god knows where. Afterwards I headed out to look for more allosaurs and possibly more. Of course, whenever I see a natural phenomenon in this game, I can't help but stop to enjoy it for a couple minutes. I managed to tame two aloes after killing this rex somehow for its prime. Now that I was satisfied with the amount of dinos I had, I just drop hunted some more. And that was a great idea because I found this industrial forge. I didn't even have to make one. And because I didn't have to make one, now I had a bunch of resources at my disposal, so I crafted an industrial cooker. Day 27, I put down one of the large metal signs that I had found in a drop and wrote a very important message on it. After that, I headed down to the rivers to loot beaver dams and kill all these weird goose things for their organic polymer. After I delivered all the goods back to my base, I constructed a raft which would help me catch fish for a very important tame. I found myself back in Rockwell's garden on day 28, but not for the scenery. I needed fungal wood so I could make fish baskets, and I made a lot of fish baskets. Like, three quarters of a day's worth of fish baskets. And if you haven't guessed by now, I was going to tame a shadow mate, or at least try. They would be an important battle tame to take to the Rockwell Prime fight, but I just could not find a good level anywhere. They were all terrible. The space cycle on day 29 was crystal, so I got as much as I could because I would need it to finish my crafting hub walls. When I got back home, I finally had what I needed to finish the walls of my crafting hub. I then went looking for beehives, which were incredibly hard to find on this map, which is unfortunate because I needed the honey to attract the fish so I could trap the fish so I could tame a shadow mane. I tried to find a queen bee, but then forgot that the chances of them spawning are apparently low, so you know what? Blech. Yeah, I didn't even need one anyway. Day 30, I capitalized on the element cycle out in the asteroid fields, and I managed to tame this high-level Astrodelphus. I named her Samantha. Then, once more, I went drop hunting. But this time, I lost a Maywing. Again! A third Maywing, but this time with a twist, because I actually ended up finding it again, so everything was fine. Day 31, I saddled up Samantha for the first time, and I gotta say, this is definitely my main method of transportation from now on. Most of the day, I just messed around with the Starfighter feature on the saddle, but then later I took my Allosaur pack out for a spin. It was kind of fun to just order them around and watch them murder everything. I decided to do another mission, and then discovered that there was a second set of canoe missions. However, this one was exactly the same, and there was just something about it that just made it easier. But when I beat both beta and alpha difficulties first try on day 32, I realized that it was just because they nerfed the damage, probably because it was a team race? I have no idea. I was still in a missions mood, so I decided to do the Star Dolphin missions afterward. After completing the mission set on all three difficulties, I headed home to breed my Allosauruses, and that's basically the only other thing I did that day. Day 33, I set up air conditioners inside my hatchery so I could hatch my first Allosaurus. The entire rest of the day was just me looking for heavy fish. I needed heavier fish so I could get better taming effectiveness on the shadow maids, but all I was finding were like one pound fish, and that, that just sucks. 
Imagine wasting an entire day looking for fish in 2023. I had spent so much time looking and I just didn't have the patience for this, so on day 34 I decided I would just settle on any fish that I could find. This is also when I realized that fish baskets spoil, and uh, yeah, I hadn't found a shadow main yet, so it would definitely spoil before I found one at this rate. And this time I finally lucked out, because I found this level 120 and level 104 in the same pack. There were so many enemies around though, so I decided to perch up on a high spot because night was falling and shadow mains get way aggressive at night. As I waded through the night, I began researching to see if I could find a trap that could maybe make taming them easier. And find a suitable trap idea I did, credit to Nooblets. The idea behind this trap was relatively simple. I would just lead them into the top little box area and then have these stone hatch frames on bottom where when they went to sleep I could sneak up and feed them through the hatch frames. Also I guess at some point a level 108 had also joined the ranks, which I was more than okay with, and I managed to trap all three. But there was just one problem. Their trap was meant for one. I killed the level 104 just because it was the lowest, and then it just seemed to work, I guess? Only time would tell. Unfortunately though, it had taken me all day to reach this point, so I had to wait through the night again. Day 36 was frustrating. By this time, my fish had spoiled, so I had to collect more, and that's what I spent all day doing, so by the time night fell, it was too late for me to try taming again. And remember that Maywing I lost in Rockwell's garden? Well, apparently he was still sitting on this pillar. I, I really don't have words. I really don't. Day 37, I had everything I needed to start my first taming attempt. And long story short, the trap works. But of course his brethren turned on him immediately, so I had to get him out of there. Then I had a real scare, after almost getting eaten by this carnivorous plant. And somehow, by the grace of God, this Carno didn't even notice me, so I managed to survive. But it was a huge setback, and I had to wait through the night again. Day 38, I took my Shadow Mane out for a test drive, but nearly died after I got pinned by this pack of, like, everything. The other Shadow Mane was still pissed that I had enslaved his friend, so I went looking for more fish to gather. I spent a lot of time doing just that, but when I came back, the Shadow Mane was still pissed. I had even tried going out of render distance, and it was still pissed. I tried relogging, and that seemed to do the trick. It was no longer upset. And after playing one more waiting game, I secured the second Shadow Main. Day 39, I returned home triumphantly. I really wanted to get that elevator project done, but I just didn't have the polymer to do it, so I went looking for polymer and drops. Wait, wait, why? I could have just gotten organic polymer. Whatever. Then I finally had everything I needed to complete the elevator. The entirety of day 40, I was just running missions. Not much to say there. I was wanting to fight Alpha Rockwell, and therefore I would need to get to work. At the very end of the day, though, I began running a mission called Survive the Ark, which was just a massive gauntlet. Although, not gonna lie, I was only running it on Gamma so far, but I was cooking. It was so easy. Once I summoned myself packs of dinosaurs to help me kill stuff, it was just easy sailing from there. Now, Alpha... On the other hand, is a different story. I spent two entire in-game days trying to beat Survive the Ark Alpha, Dave's 41 and 42, and just, no, no, I couldn't even get past the first stage. I think this mission was intended to be run by multiple survivors at the same time, but that's definitely not just an excuse for being bad. No, <laughs> what are you talking about? Better not tell anyone. Yeah, so uh, I just found a code that would force complete the mission, and yeah. I know, I know, it's cheating, but hey, listen. I spent two whole in-game days doing this, and you know what, there isn't enough coffee in the world to convince me to keep trying. For this video, anyway.
Day 43, I was leveling up one of my shadow mains when I accidentally hit this teleport pad and ended up next to the ocean. Yup, that's about it. Day 44, I was satisfied with the level my shadow mains were at and began breeding. While I waited for the first baby to pop out, I started a new mission called Choose Your Own Adventure, and that was a load of bullshit. Okay, to be fair, this one's on me. I didn't bring a projectile weapon to the final boss fight, and you just can't hit them with melee weapons, so I had to concede. I did a number of things on day 45, like set up a chemistry bench, beat Choose Your Own Adventure on Gamma, and of course, craft a whole bunch of ammo, but then my computer said no. No, you can't do that. It wasn't just OBS, believe it or not. This time, it was my entire computer, and I had to restart. So enjoy this footage of me leveling up a shadow main, because that's all I got. Day 46, I crafted a whole bunch of narcotic and gunpowder before heading out and completing Choose Your Own Adventure on Beta, which was even more annoying. With great sadness, I began the Alpha mission, but then proceeded to have the best luck out of this entire playthrough. I just seemed to be in the right place at the right time, every single time, and I managed to beat Alpha Choose Your Own Adventure on the first try with a lot of health left. Ladies, ladies, one at a time. Remember what I said on day one that I would encounter bugs when it came to missions? The Code Red missions wouldn't even let me launch them. They would just crash my game every time I tried. I tried a lot of things. Because I couldn't complete these missions, I would have to use a cheat code to access the Alpha Rockwell Prime mission, which was unfortunate. Instead, I decided to run my mental health into the ground by running the life support mission on all three difficulties. Okay, I exaggerated, because I was allowed to use my tech suit to fly around, so the only animals that really bothered me were the flying ones. Day 48 began with me raising some of my baby shadow mains. With all the narcotic I have been making, I crafted a huge amount of trank darts, and from those, I crafted some electro darts. I would use them later. Afterwards, most of the day was spent completing another set of star dolphin missions on all three difficulties. I had some time left afterwards and decided I would try to run Code Red again, to very little success. The remainder of that evening, I just grabbed a bunch of narco berries and started making dye. Day 49, I painted my exosuit so I could look snazzy in my channel colors. I headed over to Rockwell's garden to explore a bit more, but then discovered the location of the entrance to Rockwell's innards. Um, no, I'm not going there. No way. I returned to Eden and knocked out a Utyrannus and then looked for a Brontosaurus. I had a bunch of different saddles that I picked up from drops and I just wanted to use them for no particular reason at all. Day 50, I found and knocked out a level 108 Brontosaurus. It was easy with my electro darts, but when I returned later after doing god knows what, uh, it wasn't anywhere. Probably despawned? I have no idea. The Utyrannus finished taming, and then I found a level 76 Brano, and that one tamed successfully. No more disappearing dudes. I also found a female Brontosaurus by the end of the day and decided to tame that too. Why not have babies for no reason at all? Sounds exactly like the thing I do for dumb content. Day 51 was a lot more lax. I leveled up some of my newly grown shadow mains while I raised the others. I was in the mood for construction, so most of the day was just spent adding on to my base in various ways. In the late afternoon, though, there were these mammoths walking around that were really annoying, so I decided to teach them a lesson, so instead of killing them, I enslaved them. This is not a life lesson, it's just comedy? I think. I also painted my Astrodelphus saddle in the channel colors, and oh my goodness. Oh my, oh my goodness. <clears throat> Day 52, the mammoths finished taming, and I began constructing this random tower on a raised bit of land right next to my base. I didn't know exactly what I would use it for yet, but I would figure out something later. Then I began constructing a giant bridge that would connect this raised bit of land to the main base. And as a matter of fact, the next five days were spent building this bridge. Listen man, we all enjoy the game in different ways, and I like construction. That's just something I do.
After I finished the whole thing on day 57, I decided to rerun the Choose Your Own Adventure mission on Gamma. And I nearly suffered a huge embarrassment when I completed the whole thing with two seconds to go. I don't even know how I managed to do that on Gamma, but here we are. Day 58, I revisited Rockwell's innards, this time with a small pack of shadow mains that I intended to give some levels. This was a huge, huge mistake. So number one, I discovered what a summoner is and what a summoner does, and it's not fun. Not fun at all. Number two, I also discovered the acid which is also not fun. And number three, there are these small creatures called Noglins that can apparently mind control your creatures. I, I feel like I should have known about this, but I just didn't do enough research evidently. Long story short, one of my shadow mains died and I got pinned up against this wall by all sorts of stuff that the summoner spawned and I somehow managed to escape with both of the remaining shadow mains alive, but uh... There were definitely better ways to level them up. Day 59, I set out to find a Diodon to help me raise my babies, but then I uh, got distracted by this patchy rhinoceros and killed it. I had the saddle, what can I say? I just wanted to use the saddle, which I never used the saddle, but that's besides the point. I spent all day looking for a Diodon, and I found nothing. Not a single one. Where the heck did they all go? Day 60, and I was still looking for Diodons. They all probably just no-clipped into the back rooms or something, because I couldn't find a single one. That night, I just gave up and returned home, where I hatched a baby brontosaurus, just because I could. Day 61, I learned that every time you died, you respawn with an exosuit on. Because of this, theoretically, you could just fly into Rockwell's innards and try and cheese yourself a reaper impregnation, which is exactly what I tried to spend the entirety of Day 61 doing, to no avail. No reaper queens, just reaper kings, and a lot of sad gamer boy tears to go with it. That night, I returned to my base, where I would cry myself to sleep. <laughs> day 62, I was back in construction mode. All I did that day was raise baby shadow mains and give verticality to my tower, which I then decided would be my reaper birthing chamber. I did the same exact thing on day 63 as well. I tried to make my tower look a little bit Lord of the Rings-esque, and it was a work in progress, but in my opinion, it wasn't looking too good so far. Day 64, I worked on the tower a little bit more before heading back to Rockwell's innards. For whatever reason, I had a new wave of confidence. Surely a reaper queen would have spawned by now, right? Due to my good fortune, there were two Reaper Queens. I couldn't see what their levels were though because I forgot to bring my spyglass, but I led them both down into the acid regardless. The reason for doing this is because the acid does a butt ton of damage, which would make their health get down to the point where they could impregnate me in no time. On day 65, one of the Reaper Queens died and it turned out to be a level 76, which was a slight bummer. I still didn't know what the level of the other one was and I didn't want to get close enough to find out, but unfortunately I did get close enough enough to find out. Yeah, now I absolutely had to get a reaper from this thing. But when it was finally ready to impregnate me, it chose violence. Several times. Finally, I decided to bring some of the riot shields I had found in drops from home, and that did the trick, because it immediately got me. Yippee! Of course, I didn't have any heals on me, so as I tried to leave Rockwell's innards, I was killed. I managed to get my shields back though and make it out safely. The beginning of day 66 was entirely spent preparing to birth my reaper by filling my inventory with meat and nothing else. After that gruesome process was over, it was time to start doing some odd jobs around the house, such as raising, 
Crafting ammo, building up a spike wall just to secure up my base a little bit more, and starting to build an Astro Delpha saddle, because every time I would hop off Samantha, she would just start wandering off. I needed that to stop. Day 67, I did almost nothing but raise my Shadow Mains and Reaper. At one point, I did go around looking for drops and actually found a Carcharodonosaurus. I decided I would try and tame it later for content. Day 68, I continued to raise and finished my Astro Delphus stable. I also went on another drop hunt and found some war drums and decided to mess around on them a little bit. And if I'm being completely honest, I wasted a good 5 to 10 minutes on these war drums just messing around because I was giggling. Day 69, the space cycle hit Mutagel, so I spent the entire day harvesting Mutagel since you need 800 of it to craft 12 Mutagen, and I needed 24 Mutagen for the Rockwell boss fight. You see, in my notes, I have it written as Muta Pain because it's a Muta Pain in the butt to get. Yeah, see what I did there? Day 70, my Reaper finally finished growing up, and I went on a killing rampage with him. Okay, the Reapers I had on Aberration were alright, but just because the level of the Queen was a 185, this dude was a beast. The second part of that day was spent looking for the Carcharodonosaurus, but I couldn't find it. Anywhere. Yet another dino that disappeared on me. Wonderful. Day 71, I went back to Rockwell's innards, this time on my Reaper, and I was unstoppable. I proved to them that I am now the ultimate Chad in this scenario. I even found another Reaper Queen and got impregnated by it. I didn't see the level, but that would just have to be a surprise for later. And now that I had to gain experience for my soon-to-be Reaper baby, death ensued. Day 72, I gave birth to the Reaper child, and let's just say it was very disappointing. I'm not even sure what I really did this day that was important. I just sort of goofed off. I tamed two tails straighters out of pure boredom. Listen, waiting around for the babies to raise up gets me antsy. I had to do something. And that something is content. I continued to raise my children into the morning of day 73 before I realized it was another mutagel cycle, so the entire rest of the day was spent harvesting just that. No, there is no punchline. That's that that's all that happened. Day 74 and 75 were both spent raising up my children and leveling them. I broke the monotony at the end of day 75 by going on a big wood run. Yippee! One, I had completely exhausted the supply I already had doing, I don't know, probably construction. And two, I had another construction project I wanted to start working on. I'm gonna keep it a secret for now, but, but trust me, it's totally worth it. It's totally worth my time. You know me, I would never build something that's absolutely stupid, useless, and a waste of my time. I mean... <laughs> Come on, who would even do that? Most of day 76 was spent working on said project, but at the end of the day, I did go back into Rockwell's innards because I wanted a third Reaper. I sensed that I was nearly ready for the Rockwell Prime fight. I could feel it in my bones. Day 77, I felt a little down on my luck. I couldn't find a Reaper Queen for most of the day, but at the very end, I did end up finding one. And once again, I forgot to see its level, which I really hoped it wasn't another level 16. That would kind of suck, but ultimately, I wasn't concerned. Reapers are tough cookies. They would probably outlive my Shadow Mains in the fight anyway. Day 78, I returned home with a big ol' goofy aw <laughs> grin on my face. Most of the day was just spent leveling up my creatures and organizing my stuff, and I completely forgot that I still had to give birth to my Reaper. Oh no, bro! Warp speed, Mr. Sulu. Dude, if it wasn't for this tech suit, that thing would have been gone. I would have had to go get another one. But not only that, dude, the level! Dude, if I had lost that thing, I would have eaten an entire jar of bath salts. On day 79, I went looking for the last creature that I would need to complete my entire army, and that was a U Tyrannus, a male to be specific, so I could breed it with my female. I found a decent level and had no trouble knocking it out, but then I got killed by this pack of raptors, and when I say killed, I mean turned into human spam and shipped directly to the store. And to get revenge, I may have been a little bit over the top. On the way home, I leveled up my Yudi so my baby would have some extra levels, and when I got home, I immediately began breeding. 
I would begin my first serious prep work for the Rockwell Prime boss fight on day 80. I also discovered that the ocean is a good place to level your shadow mains because a lot of alpha megalodons spawn there and they give you a ton of levels if you can kill them. Now, while the exosuit is cool and all, it actually doesn't give you that much armor. Because of that, I rounded up the armor that I had gotten from drops and then crafted the extra little pieces so that I had a couple sets of backup armor. I really didn't know how much I would need. And welcome to the Ark of Painting, trademark of Zany Zebra, because one, it isn't my idea, and two, I don't want to get sued. So we'll start things off nice and easy. I'll paint a little Wojak in the corner, make him look surprised, have him point at something. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure it out. There we go. There. Now let's add a little inspirational message over here so that he's pointing at something meaningful. There. Now let's add a little bit of extra touches to this painting to make it completely well-rounded. There. Yeah, I couldn't paint to save my life. But look, wallpaper material. Day 81, I completely finished leveling up my last shadow main. And at this point, I was just goofing around entirely while I waited for my baby Yudi to grow. I wouldn't necessarily call it productive, but I did paint my armor that I would be taking into the fight, cause why not? Fight in style. You know what they say. Drip or drown. And of course, I was still goofing around on day 82. This Utyrannus was taking a long time to grow. One thing I did is take all those unused structures that I had amassed from the drop hunts and, uh, built this weird amalgamation of chaos. Just cause I could. I also finished my special little project, which you will see on the final day. And eventually, I just got so bored, I AFK'd. I'm sure there were other things I could do, like run missions, which I kind of regret not doing some of the hunting missions cause they were pre-completed, but... Oh well. The next two days looked a little something like this. And on day 85, I was all ready to go. The stage was set. My Utyrannus had finished growing. I had everything I needed to fight Alpha Rockwell Prime. And of course, since it's the last day, you get to see what my project was. Yeah, I spent way too much time on this. Perched on my wannabe porcelain throne, I kind of drank in the view one last time. I had finished all six story maps. Even with the flukes of the first two, it was just kind of weird to take in. I did it. Now, the only thing left was to finally take Rockwell down. This is where you fall to your knees, just like all the other ones. Probably wise to Threshold of my new dominion. I can afford to give you my undivided attention, and this 
This is where your little game comes to an end. too deeply into the ship's primary systems. They're failing along with him. There's only one way to ensure this all ends here. Sorry, mate. I can't come in. And I'm almost out of time to back myself up. You'll do just fine on your own out there. You're a survivor. She squandered! Well, I've survived worse. I promise you, I will find a way out of this, I will! No, you won't. It's much too late for that. It's so bright! Helena? I'm afraid! Shh. She knew. last message to you to be relayed in the event of my deactivation. I was only an artificial construct when we first met. Just a shadow of someone who lived a long time ago. But in our time together, I got to become something new. Someone new. Not Helena. HLNA. Thank you for that. I wish I could find the words to tell you how much it meant to me. <sighs> Human language is so imprecise. But I need you to do something else now. Find your own path. Your own destiny. Build a new world here. A better world. And who knows? Maybe two lost souls can still meet again somewhere. Out among the stars. Goodbye, my friend.
Warning. Catastrophic bioinvitability. Failure. All revived lifeforms require immediate communication. Something tells me that this is 